Francis Xavier Bushman was an American film actor. His career as a matinee idol started in 1911 in the silent film and his friend's wife. He gained a very large female following and was one of the biggest stars of the 1910s and early 1920s. Bushman, like many of his contemporaries, broke into the moving picture business via the stage. He was performing at Bronco Billy Anderson's SNI Studios in Chicago, Illinois, where he was first noticed for his muscular, sculpted frame. He appeared in nearly 200 feature film roles, more than 175 films before 1920, and 17 in his screen debut year of 1911 alone. He also worked for the Vitagraph studio before signing with Metro in 1915. Biography He was born in Baltimore, Maryland. As a young man Bushman joined the Maryland Athletic Club and began a bodybuilding regimen that would give him his famous film physique. He cited Sando as one of his bodybuilding influences. In New York he worked as a sculptor's model, often posing in the nude in sessions. In 1902, he married seamstress Josephine Flaudine Duval. By the launch of his film career, the couple had five children. In 1918, he was the subject of a national scandal as his affair with longtime co-star Beverly Bain became public. Three days after his divorce with Josephine was final, Bushman and Bain were married. They would eventually have a son. Bushman and his studios had kept to his marriage secret for fear of losing popularity. He was married four times. Bushman eventually retained the talented services of Harry Reichenbach as his agent. When Bushman noted that he would be well suited to starring in the upcoming 1925 film, Ben-Hur, Reichenbach had a plan to increase his client's marketability. He took Bushman to see studio executives from the railway station and dropped pennies to the street from his pocket. Lots of people followed him, picking up the coins and following them. The crowd gave the studio executives an impression that Bushman was very popular and cast him Messalar. Bushman was concerned that playing a villain would affect his career, so he asked the advice of William S. Harter who had played the part on stage for years. Take it, Hart advised, it's the best part in the play. Unlike Ramon Novaro, the star of the picture, Bushman knew how to properly drive a team of horses and a chariot without getting severely injured or killed in the process. When Ben-Hur was remade in 1959 Charlton Heston had to learn the technique and quit. The only man in Hollywood who can drive a chariot is Francis X. Bushman, and he's too old. That role might have elevated Bushman's career even further, but for supposedly being blacklisted by Louis B. Mayer, film historians have claimed that when Mayer visited Bushman's home, Bushman's valet, unfamiliar with the studio head, refused him entrance. This imagined insult allegedly fueled Mayer's wrath. At the peak of his career, he was advertised as the handsomest man in the world. Bushman was also known as the king of photo play or the king of movies before those titles were more popularly attached to Clark Gable. Bushman was paid large salaries during his screen career and donated the land upon which Sid Grauman erected his famous Chinese theater. But his fortune was wiped out in the Great Crash of 1929, and his career as a movie star had had its run. Bushman eked out a living taking small roles in pictures and attempting to run a few small businesses. On viewing one of his early films, Bushman is said to have remarked, My God, look at that. I'm putting all my emotion into my chin, after his film career had waned. Bushman made his broadcasting mark on the CBS radio network's long-running dramatic serial entitled Those We Love. In the soap opera, which ran from 1938 to 1945, Bushman played the role of John Marshall, a father of the twins. Robert Cummings rounded out the cast. In later years, he made guest appearances on television, playing roles on series such as Peter Gunn's Make Room for Daddy. The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, Perry Mason and Dr. Kildare. In 1966 Bushman guest starred on a two-part episode of Batman. 
Both Bushman and his The Grip of the Yukon co-star, Neil Hamilton, appeared in the episode, their first such reunion in 38 years. Ironically Bushman's role, as a wealthy collector of silent pictures and promoter of a silent film festival, was his last appearance on camera. Francis X, Bushman is mentioned numerous times by Pearl Bodine, in the first season of The Beverly Hillbillies. In the episode entitled, No Place Like Home, Pearl has written a song which she plays when the silent version of Ben-Hur is shown in the Clampett's hometown. In a later episode, when Pearl visits the Clampett's in Los Angeles, she speaks about hoping to meet Francis X. Bushman. In the episode, Jed's Dilemma, Jed takes the family on a sightseeing tour of Beverly Hills. When passing a fancy home, Pearl wonders if it could be the home of a movie star, possibly Francis X. Bushman. Jed tells her no, because he got a good look in the yard and didn't see room for horses or a chariot. Francis X. Bushman died from a heart attack in Pacific Palisades, California, on August 23, 1966. He was interred in Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery. Filmography See Francis X. Bushman Filmography Legacy His son Ralph Everly Bushman had a film career from the 1920s through the 1940s. Tall and good-looking, he was in over 40 films, often playing stuffy upper-class types or menacing gangsters. In Brown of Harvard he was cast against William Haynes and Jack Pickford. He was often billed as Francis X. Bushman Jr., Francis Bushman's granddaughter, Barbara Bushman Quine, married actor Harry Morgan, a grandson, Pat Conway, the son of film director Jack Conway and Bushman's daughter, Virginia, starred on the ABC Western television series Tombstone Territory.